And are we recording now? Yes, we are. Okay. So, we look at exercise three on 4-5, okay? Number three, ask us to solve this thing. And we have x3, is it x3? Doesn't matter. Oh, z, z3 minus z2. Z3 minus z2. Uh, minus 12z is zero. Minus 12z equals zero. Okay. Now they want to know the solution. Now if you were looking at your computer screen, you already know how many solutions there are, okay? Because there's three boxes, okay? But on your written test that you take in a few weeks, whenever that is, there's not going to be boxes there. You, you need to understand how many solutions there are, okay? And I'm going to say this real cl uh, clearly, real slowly, okay? Because it's a little bit tricky, okay? This problem is going to have three solutions. Three solutions, okay? And there's a very simple reason why. A lot of people think there's three solutions because there's three Z's or three terms. That's not the reason, okay? If it said this right here, now it would have five solutions, okay? There'd be five solutions to this thing, okay? So the highest power. The highest power, okay? Now, when I say that, okay, it generally, it generally has that many solutions. And what I mean is this. If I was to give you something such as this, x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals 0. There should be two solutions there. There should be two, okay? And there kind of is. And here's what I mean by kind of, okay? If we factor this, we draw two sets of parentheses, x squared is x and x. Again, there's, I want to make sure everybody's got this. This next step is very, very simple, but it's very, 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 very important, okay? You look at your first term, and then you look at your last term, okay? You don't look at the middle term yet. You look at the last term, okay? You skip over that. And we look at the sign. It's a positive. To make it positive, it's either positive, positive, or negative times negative. Well, do we just guess? No, we look here, we don't see any negatives anyway, so it's going to be a positive, positive. And how do you times the 25 but add the 10? Divide and five. Okay? And then what we do is we ask ourselves, what makes zero? When I take this times this, we get zero for an answer. I want to make sure you understand, whenever you multiply and get zero for an answer, something has to be zero, okay? If I have two numbers, I'm thinking of two numbers right now, and I tell you that when I multiply them, I get zero, one of those has to be zero, okay? So either this is zero or this is zero. Well, we ask ourselves, what makes this zero? Negative five. What makes this zero? Negative five. So this is why I meant by kind of two answers. We have two answers, but it's the same answer, okay? It's a double answer, okay? So just want to make sure you understand. Now, I'll tell you right now, there's no way this has three solutions, okay? It has two or less solutions. This right here has three or less solutions, so they might be double solutions, okay? So let's figure this thing out. So when you factor, I've told you guys that I think factoring is tough. I, I think factoring is a hard thing to do. I think it also is um, made up of a bunch of simple steps. If you can remember all the simple steps, and there's a lot of them, okay? It makes it a little bit easier, okay? But it's, it's a lot to remember. First thing you got to make sure is it equals zero. So far, so good. It equals zero. That's it equals zero. Then we look for a common factor. Well, z is common to all of them. So we can factor out a z. So we put a z and then just one parenthesis. We ask ourselves, z times what is z3? z squared. Minus, because there's a minus sign. z times what is z squared? z. Minus, z times what is 12z? 12. So we factor out a z. Okay? The next step is also really, really simple. It's real important, but it's also really, really simple, okay? You know what you do with the Z? Ignore it. Don't look at it. Don't erase it. It's there. Just don't look at it. Ignore it, okay? Next step's easy also. You draw a couple sets of parentheses, okay? Then we look at Z squared. So let's make Z squared Z times Z, okay? And then we ignore this middle term. We look at our last term, okay? Our last term is a negative. In order to get a negative, you multiply a positive and a negative. You multiply a positive and a negative. Now, it doesn't matter if it's a positive negative or a negative positive. And the reason is, is because my first terms are the same. If this was 5z and 4z, would it make a difference where I put the plus and the minus? Is this the same thing? Do these look exactly the same? Yeah. No, because your first terms are different. Okay. So if your first terms are the same, it doesn't matter if it's a plus minus or a minus plus. It doesn't matter. And if this starts off, I've shown some of you guys this little trick. You really want to memorize this trick. It makes things so much easier if you can memorize this, okay? If this starts off with a 1z squared, 
you look for two numbers that multiply to this, but add to that number, okay? So just ignore the negative. To multiply to get to 12, you have four times three, two times six, and one times 12. In my videos, you probably heard me say several times, not making fun of anybody here, but if, if, if you know your times tables, factoring is easier. If you struggle with your times tables, factoring is even harder yet, okay? So, which of these adds up to one? Well, none of them do. Four and three add up to seven, two and six add up to eight, one and 12 add up to 13. But I'm forgetting, I heard somebody say it, negative, one of them is negative. So I need to put a negative on the four or the three or the two or the six or the one or the 12. If I put the negative on the four, negative four and positive three add up to negative one, and that's what we want. So that's what we want to pick. Does it matter where I put the four and the three? Yeah. The four has to have the negative, three has to have the positive, don't forget that Z. Now, something else I want to make sure you understand. Factoring, probably the tough part of factoring is knowing when you're done, okay? Knowing if, when you're done or not, okay? Does this factor further? Short answer is no, and here's why. Everything is first degree. There's no squares or cubes or nothing. Everything's to the first power, first power, everything's first. I'm not saying everything gets to the first power, not every time, but if you do get everything to the first power, you're done. Now, Last assignment, you would have been done with this problem. Yeah, one more step. I want the answer, I didn't want you just factoring it. I want you to factor it in order to get the solutions. So we ask ourselves, we're taking this times this times this and getting zero. So either this is zero, or this is zero, or this is zero. Well, what makes this zero? Positive four. Four minus four is zero. What makes this zero? Negative three. This one is so easy that students struggle with it, okay? What makes Z zero? Well, I need a number. What makes Z zero? Negative Z. Not negative Z, zero. If you plug in a zero for Z, Z is zero, okay? If I plug in zero here, does this turn into zero? No, it turns into three. If I plug in zero here, it turns into negative four. If I plug in zero here, it's just zero. So our answers are zero and negative three and positive four. And don't lose sight of this, okay? This is no different than doing problems like this, okay? The answer to this problem is two. Why? Because if I take three times two is six, plus five is 11. If I plug in two, you get a true answer. If I plug in zero for all these Z's, you know what you get? Yeah. Zero. If I plug in negative three for all these Z's, you know what you get? Zero. If I plug in four for all these Z's, you know what I get? Zero. If I plug in anything else, you know what you get? Not zero. Okay, so those, we're just finding solutions. Okay, it's just they're harder. This one you could probably do in your head. I hope you can do that one in your head. These other ones you can't necessarily do in your head. They're, they're tougher. So again, I wanna make sure you understand. I never said factoring is easy. First time I stopped talking to you about factoring, I said factoring is hard. Factoring is hard. Why do we do it? Because it makes hard problems easy. Once it's factored form, it's a piece of cake. Okay, it's real simple. Let's look at number five. Not number five, yeah, number five. Okay. So on number five, we have what? 2x4 minus 4x3 plus 4x to the third equals uh, negative 2x squared. Okay, so first thing we need to do is not factor yet, okay? It's got to equal zero. It has to equal zero, okay? So it doesn't matter which side we make zero. I'm going to make the right side zero. I'm going to add 2x squared to this side. And there are no like terms. So I'm put them in the right order, 2x4 minus 4x3 plus 2x squared equals zero, okay? So this one should have, at most, four answers. So this is fourth power, fourth degree. There's gonna be no more than four answers, okay? How high do you go? What's that? So how high do you go? Like usually you would like take some side. Oh, you could. There, there's gonna be some in here that it's not gonna be, you'll be okay, trust me, okay? You'll be fine. They're not any harder, okay? So, uh, we look for a common factor. What could I, I could take an x out. I can actually take an x squared out. I actually take out more than an x squared. I can take out a two x squared. Two goes to two, four, and two. They all have at least x squared, so two x squared. What about four? Uh, well. No, like, how do you? Oh. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so 2x squared times what gives you 2x4? x squared minus 
2x squared times what gives you 4x3? 2x plus. Now be careful here, okay? Some students will struggle on this thing. If I say, what if I do the 2x squared to make 2x squared, they'll say, oh, you, you don't do nothing. Yeah, but I, I got to put something there, okay? We're timesing. What is it that I times by and we're not really doing anything? When you times by zero. one. No, when you times by zero, it does something. Yeah. What happens when you times by zero? It makes it zero. If you add zero, you're not doing anything. But when you're timesing, it's timesing by one. Okay? Okay. We ignore this 2x squared. Don't look at the 2x squared. It's there. Don't look at it, though, okay? Draw your two sets of parentheses. X squared is X and X. Ignore the middle term. Look at the last term. It's a positive. I'm going to say this real slowly because this is where a lot of students make mistakes. Lots of really smart students make this mistake. They'll say a positive. I say, how do you make a positive? And the positive is either a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative. Here's what they'll do. They'll put minus plus. And I know exactly why they put it. Any guesses of where that minus and plus came from? Negative. Minus plus, minus plus. I've never said that's what you do. I said you look at your last term to make a positive to either a plus and a plus or a minus and a minus. You have to put both pluses or both minuses. Now, do we just guess? Mm -mm. We take a glance over here. We've got to get some negatives somehow. So it's got to be minus, minus. And how do we times to get one but add to get two? One and one. One times one is one. One plus one is two. And don't forget the two x squared. Okay? So, this doesn't factor any further. We ask ourselves, what makes zero here? One. What makes zero here? Also one. Now, what could I plug in here to make zero? What could I plug in for x to make two x squared turn into a zero? Zero. zero. So, I wrote down three numbers, but there's really only two answers, okay? But there's a possibility of four and that's what Well, we're going to talk about that in just a second, okay? There are four total answers, okay? There are four total answers. And we only have three of them here, but even then, there's really only two of them, okay? So, I mean, don't, I mean let's write this down, but I still want to talk about this, okay? You're, you're going to click on the answer zero and one. There's only two distinct answers, okay? Now, if you're going, well, I, there's three, and yeah, I see that this is a double one, so where's the fourth one hiding? Where's that hiding? Back here at 2x squared. I could have done this. I actually could have factored that further. I could have gone 2 times x squared is x times x, times x minus 1, times x minus 1, okay? 2 times x times x is 2x squared. So we have 1 and 1 and 0 and zero, okay? There's four answers, but only two distinct answers, okay? So just zero and one, okay? So what we're saying is the highest power is the most number of answers you'll get, okay? The most we could have got was four. We only had actually two distinct answers. Okay. So let's do an easier one. Well, okay. This one I remember doing every year, and I'm going to give you guys a chance to really impress me, okay? So we have 5w3 equals 10w, I think it says, equals 10w, okay? This will be a shorter one. Again, I'm really giving you a chance to impress me. Which yes, sir. Uh, just grab my trap drawer, just grab one in there. Uh, just, uh, I'll show you when you get back there. The middle drawer... Right, you have to reach under. Nope, nope, nope. Right there, it's under. You have to reach under. There you go. Yep. Okay, so the first thing we got to do here is we have to minus 10w. It's got to equal zero. Okay? So if we do that, we can't combine those. Those are not like terms. 5w3 minus 10w is just 5w3 minus 10w. Equals zero. Okay, always has to equal zero. And then we look for a common factor. Okay? We know that we can take a w out of both of them, and also 5 goes into both 5 and 10, so we can factor out a 5w. Okay? So, we take a 5w out, 5w times what gives you 5w3? w squared minus 
5w times what gives you 10w? 2. Okay. Oh, shoot. I was going to say, these aren't the right answers. I, I messed up here. I apologize. This isn't a 10w. That should be a 50w. I apologize. Which would minus 50w minus 50w. We still can factor out a 5, though. But that shouldn't be w squared minus 2. It should be w squared minus 10. I apologize. Now, we're going to uh, take... Say that one time? Yeah. Oh, yep. We're going to uh, pause this question for a second here because it's something that we're going to go over that you've got to have down there. I've said probably three or four times a day already that factoring is hard. There's one kind of factoring, though, that you cannot convince me that it's difficult. And it's the most important factoring that you, you, if you get. If you're only going to memorize one thing, please don't. But if there's only one thing you're going to memorize with factoring, this is what you need to memorize. Difference of squares, okay? Difference of squares. Difference means subtract. If I want to find the difference in our ages, I subtract, okay? A difference of squares, okay? Now, I would just watch this for a second. I wouldn't write these down. I would just watch, okay? And hopefully, after about three or four examples, you have these down really, really quick. These, these are ones that once you know it, you should be able to knock these out very quickly, okay? Squares. Now, I don't want to put anybody on the spot here, make me embarrass anybody here, but if you're sitting there going, I'm not, I don't mean, know what I mean by a square. The first square number is one, because it's one times one, or one squared. The second square number, is four, two times two, or two squared. The third number is three squared, three times three, which is nine, four times four, which is 16. The 10th square number is 100, 10 times 10. How do I find the 75th square number? What, which is whatever that is, I don't know what it is, I don't care what it is, okay? I don't want you to memorize this list, I want you to understand where the list comes from, okay? So, five times five, six times six, seven times seven, eight times eight, nine times nine. Okay? If I gave you x squared minus 25, that is a difference of squares. That's a square? I mean, just read it. x squared. What's squared? x squared. And 25 is 5 squared. That factors the x plus 5, x minus 5. Done. That's simple factoring. Okay? If I gave you y squared minus 64, that's y squared and that's 8 squared. So y plus 8. Y minus eight, okay? Now, bless you. Some of the students say, what if they're both minus? Then you factored it wrong. That's not the way you do it. It's always plus minus, okay? One more of those, if I gave you Z squared minus uh, uh, nine, that's Z, and that's three. Z plus three, Z minus three. Questions on different squares. Okay, here's your chance to impress me. This, is this a difference of square? Is 10 a square? No, no it's not. And it's not, and you're right, you're totally right, but it kind of is. I mean, it kind of is, okay? It's not on the list. 10 is not on the list. Now, if you're going, yeah, 10's right here. That's not 10. That's, that's 100, which is radical 10, okay? So 10 is not, I mean, this is a difference, and that's a square, but you don't normally think of 10 as a square, okay? But it kind of is, and no calculators on this one. That's not the way I want you to do it. If you're going to impress me, you're going to do it without a calculator. Can anybody tell me? What squared is 10? What number squared is 10? Any idea? No calculator. Don't say 5. It ain't 5. Would it have to be in multiple? No. Any idea what number squared would give you 10? Four and a half. What's that? Four and a half. Well, 4 and a half times 4 and a half. No, that's, that's too big. Four, 4 times 4 is 16. So yeah, that's, that's okay. At least, hey, at least you had to guess. That's fine. Like yes, ma'am. Uh, 3 and a half. Three and a half is a good guess. Three and a half times three and a half is close to ten. It's close. Okay. Three point three is even better guess, but I want an exact answer. Okay. And if you, after I say this, some of you are going to go, "Oh crap! I should have said that." Okay. That's okay. What squared gives the ten? Because you're asking. Uh huh. And I, I'll give credit where it's due. First time I remember asking this, it was uh, Mrs. Uh, Hammond's daughter Haley. You know Haley? She shouted it out, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" I was so impressed. And she was a good math student, but I was just like, "Man!" I, I remember when she said that, I was like, that's a good guess, but no. And again, you're kind of doing calculating in your head. You shouldn't have to. If you know it, what number squared will give you 10? No, no guesses? Tell you what, I should have told you this a few months, a month ago, but I couldn't because we were virtual. I'll show you something, and then you guys will have the answer, okay? 
When I teach, this is giving it away, okay? If I take a number and I square it and then I square root it, what do we get? Like if I started out with five, what's five squared? 25, 25. square root that. Five. If I take uh, 10 and I square it and then square root it, what happens? So what happens? When you square something, you square root it, what happens? It goes back to square root. So you do 10 times 10 and you square root it. Okay, well, what number times itself gives you 10? Then? Not 10. 10 times 10 is 100. But then you square root it. So what are you saying? What number times itself gives you You're so close. You're, you're right there. Square root of 10. So you got it. Very good. Oh. The square root of 10. If I take the, which is 3 point something, I mean, what's the square root of 9? So the square root of 10 is a little more than 3. Okay? The square root of 10. That's the exact answer. Three point, I don't know what it is, okay? But if I take this and I square it, what do these do to each other? They cancel, so you have what? 10. So, this is what squared? W. This is what squared? Not 10. The square root of 10. So this factors to W plus the square root of 10, and W what? Minus the square root of 10. Okay? So can you do that for all the ones that don't? Well, I mean, right here. If I gave you x squared minus uh, 16, you could do x plus radical 16 and x minus radical 16. But what is radical 16? Or no. What'd you say? What's the square root of 16? Yeah. Four. So, I mean, it's not wrong. But it's kind of like saying true or false. Yeah, but for all the ones like that you can't actually If it's that. a difference and if this is a square, then yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. And what I'm getting at is this, and I'm not making fun here. True or false. We did number three, then five, then seven. Is the next problem this? Is that the next problem? Yeah. Why? Right. That's is that the number nine? It's a weird way of writing it, but technically that's right. But that's I'm not gonna write the square root of eighty one. I'm gonna write Nine, but we're not done with this problem yet. So, what makes that zero? Be careful. Some students say, oh, 10 does. Mm-mm, not 10. Radical 10. Does that radical make a big difference? Yes, it does. If you take a test in a few weeks and you think, man, I aced this sucker. I did great. And at the top of your test, I put 100%. I get the test back, oh, sweet. And I go, oh, wait, shoot, I made a mistake. You good with that at test now? No. Nope. What's your 100%? 10. 10. That makes a huge difference question. Uh, so you don't have a square on the uh, square root of 3? Do what now? We don't have no, 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 no. Because no. what I'm saying is what number squared would give you that? Oh. The ra square root of 10 squared is 10. Okay? So if I said what do I square? If I square this, it would be 10. If I square this, it would be 10. This one would be negative radical 10. And be careful here. Some students say, oh, negative 5 here. Uh-uh. Five times what makes zero? What do I times five by to make it zero? Zero. So we got all three answers. So when we put it in, then we have to put radical number 10 in. Radical 10. 10 and radical 10 are not the same thing. Radical 10, Chelsea said, was three point something. Okay? They're not the same. That's like saying radical 100 and radical and, and 100 are the same number. They're not. Okay? This is what I wanted to show you. I should have showed you this a few weeks ago. So we just said that. Squares and square roots cancel each other out, okay? So, let me show you this. I don't think I showed this to you before. Speak up. You'll know immediately if I showed this to you before. Um, can we all agree that girls are time and money? Yep. Even girls, could you agree with that? Girls are time. I have a daughter. Have I shown you this before or not? No. I don't think I did. Because I remember during uh, the lockdown, I remember thinking, man, I wish I would have shown you guys this, but I couldn't do it without an audience. So, girls are time and money. What's that? Okay, and you ever heard the expression time is money? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whenever you see time, I can replace it with what? Money. So I can say girls are money times money, because time is money. Okay, what's well, another way of saying money times money? Time times time. Money square. square. Okay, have you ever heard the expression money is the root of evil? Of evil? Have ever heard that expression, money is the root of all evil? Chill. So let's write this mathematically. Money equals the root of evil. 
So whenever I see money, I can replace it with the root of evil. What do these symbols do to each other? So girls equal what? Evil. The proof that girls are evil. Oh, oh, that was weird. So, I knew, I knew that that was have you seen that before? Yeah. Yeah. I remember a few years, uh, a couple of years ago, gosh, who was it? I'll throw a name out here. I'm sure you probably don't know me. Graduated like 12 or 13 years ago. His name was Hayes Damon. Anybody know who Hayes is? No. Anyhow, I remember he came across that online. I'm friends with him on Facebook now, and I remember he, uh, a few years back, he sent this to me. He says, Kale, I remember you teaching me that in class. I still remember this. It's awesome. So anyhow, just, it's just a joke. Okay, girls. Okay. Girls are evil, but guys are idiots. And the proof of that is just look around and look at us. Okay. So anyhow, it's just a joke. Okay. So, and I always show that to make sure you guys understand that these symbols cancel each other out. So, I mean, if I ask you this real quick, the square root of 78.6 squared, you should be able to tell that right now. What is it? 78.6. 78.6. They cancel each other out. I don't, I don't know what the square root of 78.6 is, but I know these things can cancel each other out. Okay? All right, let's try a few more of these. I don't want to go all hour today because there are some of these that still need a little bit of time to work on the previous section. Number nine. Okay. Okay, so we have 2C4 minus 6C3, 2C4, 6C3, uh, equals 12C2, two squared, minus 36C. Okay, so at this point you should be able to answer this. What should we do first? Get it to zero. Which side? Does it matter? No, I'm going to get the right side going. So I'm minus 12c squared, minus 12c squared, plus 36c, plus 36c. So the entire right side is zero. Are there any like terms on the left side? Is there anything we can put together? Or not? Uh, no. no. So let's put them in the right order. 2c4 minus 6c3 minus 12c squared plus 36c. Now, I'm going to say this. I'm not yelling at anybody here, but there's... A lot of people didn't ask me any questions yesterday or, the, or on Tuesday over the assignment. That, that worries me a little bit. I mean, I, hopefully you got it down, okay? I was hoping there was a few that asked questions yesterday. That's great. But if you were afraid to ask questions for whatever reason, I don't know if they're trying to yell at you or what, I don't know. But, I mean, here's a question that, I mean, you've got to be able to answer this. If you can't, listen up, okay? Who remembers from the last section? How do we factor if we have four terms? Actually, let's do this first. Is there a common factor? We should do that. I'm sorry. Is there something I can factor out of, out of 2, 6, 12, and 36? 2? Can I take a C out? C squared? C squared out of all of them? No. This one only has 1. So factor out of 2C times C3 gives you 2C4 minus 2C times 3C squared is 6C3 minus 6 C plus 18. Something I've talked to you about today. What do you do with this 2C? You add it to the And do what with it? Don't, don't pay attention to it. Erase it? No. Don't erase it. Just don't look at it. Okay? It literally covered up if you have to. Okay? Okay, now here's what I meant to ask. What do we do now if we have four terms to factor? What do we do? We have four terms. How do we factor four terms? You group them. First two, last two. Okay, it's first two, last two. So I'm going to underline the first two, underline the last two. Okay, if you have four terms, very good. You always group them. Okay, so we're ignoring this. It's there. What can I factor out of C3 and 3C squared? C squared. They both have a C squared. Times what is C3? C. Minus C2 times what is 3C2? A couple of you asked me this the other day, or emailed me, and I told you this. When I look at this one, what goes into 6 and 18? 2 does. 3 does. Anything else? 6 does. What should I factor out, the 2, a 3, or a 6, or doesn't it matter? 6. What? Not, the, not just easier. Biggest. You want the biggest thing. Now, hang on one more time, okay? We are not going to factor out 6 on this. We're going to factor out a negative 6. Here's why. Whenever, whatever you're factoring starts off with a negative, factor the negative out. So don't factor out 6, factor out negative 6. Okay? So put negative 6 
times what is negative 6c? C. C. Negative 6 times what is positive 18? Negative 3. Uh, I probably shouldn't do this, but oh well, I'm going to do it anyhow. I'm going to put somebody on the spot here because I know I've helped the person with this type of question a few times. Look at what we have here. And you can't say yes because the teacher's helping you. You know what? Does that look pretty good right now, I think, or not? Well, I'm not saying we're done, but are we on the right track? Do you think we've made a mistake? We're getting there. Slow down. Okay, I'm just saying up until up now, are we okay so far, though? Why? Saying what? The stuff in the parentheses, what? Look, look at them. One word. They're what? They're the same. Very good. All right. That's fantastic. Okay. The stuff in the parentheses needs to be the same. If they're not the same, what would you have said? Slow down. We're messing up here, okay? So this sounds really weird here, but you know how many C minus 3s we have here? C squared of them. Mm -mm, C squared. That's what it says. If I give you this right here, three 4x plus 1s. How many 4x plus 1s? Three of them. How many now? Negative 4. Not a negative 4. How many, how many now? No. W. Well, it says, no, it says there's a W of them. It wouldn't be one W. Well, one W. You didn't say one W. You said W. You said one. Okay. So there are C squared of them here, and there are negative 6 of them here. So you put them together. Now, be careful. Some students say, so you have negative 6C squared? No. You have this combined with this. What's C squared put together with negative 6? C squared minus 6. C squared minus 6, C minus 3s. Now, I don't mean to like rub your nose in there right here, but just anyone 